Hey everybody, Nick from the Bass Hookup, and today I'm back out here on the local lake. It's a cloudy day, and I got about one hour, so I'm going to bring you guys with me, and I have just a top spin on. So I know because I came out here the other afternoon and smacked them on the top spin. Uh, if you don't know what a top spin is, it's first gen fishing. You could catch them uh, on Tackle Warehouse, Bass Pro Shop, local mom and pops, but that's a top spin, basically the reverse of an underspin. The reason being is that you can reel this thing on the bottom and still get the flash. And it puts off a lot more flash than an underspin as well. If you look at one in the water, reeling it in next to uh, underspin, they look completely different. So my goal is today, these fish are out here kind of on this flat and we kind of have pre-spawn fish and post-spawn fish, so a mix. So they're just roaming out here and we might get into a school of them, I did the other day, so I'm hoping to do the same thing. But I'm hoping for an hour, just put the smack down on them, bring you guys along, see how many we could catch. Maybe catch a big one, but, um, and if you're new to the channel, we give away half our YouTube income every single month. If you want, you know, a gift card, tackle, we'll send it to you. All you have to do is subscribe and leave a comment in that month's videos. And then on the first of every month, we randomly select a comment. And then we'll get in touch with you or you get in touch with us. Uh, we have an Instagram, the Bass Hookup Instagram. Go on there, DM us if you're the winner. Uh, the winner from May 1st already DM me, so we're working out what we want to do there. Maybe a fishing trip. One of the winners already, he came out to this pond right here, and we put the smack down on him. We caught like 40 fish. So if you want to come out here, jump in this cool little pond boat with me and fish these local private ponds that you probably will never get the chance to fish, leave a comment, subscribe to the videos. You guys can come out here and fish and I will put you on fish for sure out here. So that's about it for the video. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get started and just start fan casting around. I really don't even need to get up on the trolling motor, but what I'm gonna do with this bait, I'm casting it out, keeping kind of a taut line, and letting it go to the bottom, I'm sitting in about eight feet. And there's patches of weeds out here. And it seems like if I get it in a, patch of weeds or if I, not in a patch of weed but if I get it in a clear spot where I could reel it on the bottom that really seems like where I was getting a lot of my bites and so it seems like the weeds are actually growing a lot more out here than they are up there and there's a line like a weed line that's way out here so I'm gonna I'm assuming I'm casting up there to clean water. I'm gonna reel my swim bait towards that weed line. Let go to the bottom. And I'm not getting any weeds right here, so I'm just gonna, again, this thing's made to reel right on the bottom. It's got the blade on top, so it's gonna keep working for you. Reel it. Got a little weeds on there. I could see the weeds like right under the surface right here so they're they're, they're clean weeds and uh, clean hydrilla so I am gonna cast it again up there basically the inside weed line and, and it's a huge inside weed line Man, it sink took a long time to sink. This is a uh, I'm gonna break it free of any weeds that might be on it. I mean, there are weeds on the bottom too, like this algae. I'm surprised how long it took to hit the bottom because this is a this is a half ounce bait. Let's try cast this out to the middle way out in the middle of this big bay right here. This is just a big flat bay. And it's immediately in the weeds because these weeds go way out. The water's fairly clear and the weeds grow just way out to the, to the middle of this lake. That's all right, I just speed it up, clear it, and just reel it over the top of the weeds and see if one comes out and eats it. 
Let me clean the weeds off. Cast back up shallow. I might try something different instead of letting it go to the bottom, just start reeling it real slow. See if that changes anything. Again, any bait you're throwing, you gotta kind of imagine what it's doing and where it's at in that water column. I'm always trying to keep my bait in contact with something. Even though there's weeds, I don't wanna get it caught in the weeds, but I do wanna have it just ticking right through the tops of that grass. And I don't want it to get down in there, but I do want it close. So I'm trying to imagine like, and always feeling for where my bait's at. If I'm getting a lot of grass on it, then I know I have to speed it up. And again, this is a this is the half ounce one with a five aught hook, so it's pretty heavy. But I know I'm throwing it up there. It's only about six, seven feet deep, and it's taking a while to sink. It's it's a uh, actually surprising so right where I'm at looks like the weeds kind of um, taper off here so I'm trying to imagine the weed line and I'm thinking it's going straight out this way and that's where I want to cast the fish are going to use the weed lines just like a roadway so let's go one right down here kind of parallel Go down. Oh, there's one. Man, he knocked slack in that thing. Oh, that's a nice one. Nice fish. I mean, he absolutely knocked slack. And I got to remember where that's at. Because again, there was a school yesterday. It's a nice fish. I mean, my bait is gone. Think he wanted that? I mean, that's gone. Usually when you feel that uh, slack get knocked in your line. It's them just sucking that bait in. That's a nice fat fish right there. I'm gonna let him go. Let me clean you guys off. It's a little bit dusty. Make sure it's recording. Yesterday it wasn't recording. Yeah. Well, today's a little better. It's actually recording. So that fish was right out. Right out here, right after I said, kind of imagine where the weed line is and you want to cast it down that weed line. I mean, whew, that thing knocked, knocked it. And that one, I was just creeping it on the bottom. It came through like some algae or something. Cast out deep. I'm just fan casting this whole flat, trying to find a concentration of them. I know that they're swimming around. I know that there's fish here and there. I could go down this thing and fan casting and catch fish, but just looking for that school. Oh, oh just had one. Just have one out there. This lake reminds me a lot of Clear Lake. This side. It's real big and flat. It's like the north side of Clear Lake. Once you find them, then you're on them. But sometimes it could take a while because it's just a massive expanse of flat land. Thing is with weeds, bass love grass, so don't ever let the weeds deter you from throwing a bait in there. I mean, most moving baits are gonna get caught in the grass and get grass on them, so. 
You gotta just be patient. Keep on throwing it. Keep working it through. Take the grass off every single time you reel in. I'm right there. Now that was a lot smaller fish right there. A lot smaller, but it was a fish. And he cast back up towards the bank. Just fan casting around. The good thing about this bait is that it gets bit. If, oh, Bad one there. But if there's a fish around it, it's probably going to bite it and uh, you could cover water with it, cover a lot of water. Now if you figure out where they're at with this bait, you could always switch if you want to throw a drop shot or something in there. I'm sure you could catch some fish on a drop shot, but you know, while they're biting, while they're biting the moving bait, I'd much rather throw the moving bait than something slow. Two bites in a row. Oh, three. We may have found the cast to make here. Eat it again. Now, my setup is just, that's a half ounce top spoon, five aught hook, six aught hook, I think five aught. I'm throwing this on 15 pound fluorocarbon on a Stealth Sticks booty with a Luz uh, Tournament Pro reel. And I think that might be the line. I had three bites in a row. Let's see if there's another one in there. Usually with three bites in a row, I'd be surprised if there wasn't more than that fish out there. Now, sometimes when you catch a fish, you bring them in towards the boat because they fall it in. And then you might have to regroup a little bit, but I'm hoping that there's more out there. If not, uh, we'll just keep on fishing around. Bunch of weeds. That's all right. Shake them off. Go towards the bank over here. When I feel it, if I feel it get heavy, I'm going to take my rod and I'm just going to pop it on slack line hard. I'm trying to free any weeds from it so I can. Oh, so I could continue my cast and possibly catch a fish just like this. Oh, and I just pulled them. But you could get a lot more casts in if you do that. Instead of when you feel it get heavy and you just keep reeling, the weeds are just going to continue to pile up on there. If you pop it hard on a slack line, leave a little bow in your line, I pop it real hard. You're freeing it of those weeds, just like that. That fish, it could have seen that bait fly out of those weeds. It came up and ate it. So if you're the guy that always just gets a ton of weeds on it, continues to reel, and then, oh my gosh, just had another one. And then keeps on, uh, oh, there's fish right here. Keeps reeling in nothing but weeds every cast. Well, you need to learn how to pop it uh, free of those weeds because at the end of the day, 
the more clean casts you get in while fishing, the more fish you're gonna catch, right? You don't wanna have your bait covered in weeds all day. If your buddy's getting a bunch of clean casts and you're getting them all in the weeds, well, he's gonna catch all the fish and you're not. So you gotta really learn how to free any bait from weeds properly. Um, so you get more casts in. You can continue the cast. A lot of times when that bait gets free to those weeds and it clears all them weeds, that's when those bites happen. So I know you can't see behind us here, but I'm casting towards the bank. Um, just kind of a bunch of, bunch of the same stuff you see that way, just trees and trees and flat grass, grassy bank. Uh, out here, it's it's only about seven feet deep. So just catching those roamers, the the post spawners, the pre spawners, if there are. One thing I do like about the half ounce is I can cast it a long way. One disadvantage is you probably are going to get more weeds and you're going to have to vary your retrieve to keep it out, out of the bottom, off the bottom just a little bit. Now if it, there are no weeds and it's just a hard bottom, it'd be perfect. But I know the bottom here is covered in just slime and, uh, and grass. And I'm watching my graph because the grass out here, again, I want to find those clean spots. And if I can see grass on my graph and all of a sudden I see a clean spot, like say a fairly large one or even a small one, I'm going to remember that and I'm going to turn around and cast to it. I'm going to go past it, get within casting distance and cast over it. Or even if I see some sort of a drop off on the weeds, like a weed line, I'm gonna make sure to remember where that's at. Oh, there's one. Uh, feels like it. Feels like it. Uh, that's a decent fish. This one was shallow. Swimming straight at me. Good fish again. Ate that thing. All right, there you go. A nice fat little fish. And we continue on. Hit it pretty good. Feels good. Anytime you catch a fish, feels good. I don't care if it's on a a Senko, a drop shot, a jig, a spinner bait, a crank bait. Obviously, there's things that we all love to throw. Um, I would say with this bait, you get more of a spinner bait bite, and I love that spinner bait bite compared to an underspin. They really try to kill it, so. You know, underspin, you get a lot of uh, uh, mushy bites. Um, this bait, I get a lot of that just thunk. So that's another difference between this and an underspin. Going back out deep, got to check it. So I went down you know, maybe 75 yard a bank, throwing to the bank. Haven't been, uh, hasn't been as productive. Tells me I probably should concentrate more out there. Seems like, you know, I'm getting more bites per cast. Casting it out away. Oh. There's one, and that guy hammered it. I guarantee he has it swallowed. I mean, swallowed it. Not swallowed it, but he smashed it. Mm. 
came in. Oh, 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 just came off. Stop. There we go. Cast back out deep and boom, right away. Cast back out there. Turn the boat so you guys can see where I'm casting. Just casting straight out that way. Yeah, that fish smoked it. There's one. Found one. Another just solid fish right there. Again, casting out away. They're not always where they seem to be, right? I mean, the toolies and all this stuff up here look so good. But, uh, yeah, the offshore stuff is better. Right now, anyway. And most of the time. That one, I didn't let go to the bottom. That one, I just started reeling it. Um, slow, kind of let it fall. Reeled it like this, let it fall. And on the fall, he hit it. You know, as fishermen, we're always, at least I'm always, like, second get not second guessing, but wondering if there's a, a something that I could be doing that's better. Maybe it's a different presentation. Maybe it's the same bait, different color. Uh, maybe it's a different spot. But always thinking that. Maybe, you know, maybe this isn't the best spot on the lake. Maybe there's somewhere else. So just thinking about, you know, maybe there's fish way out deep right in the mouth of this big bay where it drops off into like 15 to 20, maybe even deeper. Or it could be a ghost town out there. Oh, got one right there. Just had one right there. spot oh it's right there following it in it's right there oh dude bit my tail off new swim bait but that fish was right there chasing it in switch swim baits What I'm doing right here is there's a channel that runs out from the bank, pretty distinct channel that drops off about three feet on each side, runs straight out here. Um, bottom of the channel is about 10 feet on either side, it comes up to like six. So just trying to run this channel, seeing if there's a deeper, a, a better female sitting in it. Kind of using it as an alley to get up here shallow if they want to spawn. Doesn't seem like anything yet though.
might go change spots. It's almost time for me to go. So might go back toward the truck, fish over there a little bit and see if we can get some over there. So a couple more casts here and then we'll head over there. jig fish swim jig right there first gen flash x fish came right out of that tree came over the branch boom it's about time to go i was gonna say we're probably not gonna get one here in the end but uh hey that fish saved the day came out of them branches right there and ate it i have one flash on it back there too maybe we'll get another one maybe all right, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. We just came out here through the top spin, caught fish. You can see how there's fish offshore, how it kind of works, and uh, talked about getting weeds off your bait, um, keeping in contact with the bottom or some type of structure that you're fishing, and caught, a, caught some fish. We're only out here about an hour. Um, I almost feel like playing the video just straight through, but I don't know if you guys would like that because uh, there are some times where I'm not catching them, but... Let me know in the comment section down below. Leave a comment to enter the contest and subscribe for half our YouTube income. Enter that contest or come out here and fish with me. So leave a comment, subscribe. Let me know if you guys want to see, if you want me to come out here and fish for an hour and you want to see it all uncut, just raw footage, let me know. I mean, honestly, it makes it easier on, uh, on me. I don't have to edit anything. I just upload it and boom, be done. So let me know. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.